Kreya. Ah, uh, I don't know why I did that. Hi, welcome back to another Princess Connect video. My name is Lace, and today we're gonna be talking about a new update. We've got the second half of the Mysteria content. We've got Greya coming to join us. However, on top of that, we've got a whole bunch of other exciting things, such as some guaranteed premium gacha. We've got some things for dolphins, I would say, and then we've got an event rerun. So without further ado, let's just jump into the content. And so to kick things off, we've got Greya over here, where she is gonna be and friend she is going to be Ru's friend she is going to be joining us and joining us in the permanent pool so with that said let's go into evaluating her kit seeing how well she does but I know a lot of you are actually Monaria friends Rage of Bahamut fans and if you guys are going to roll for her for those kinds of reasons then just freaking go for it ignore what I'm about to say all right so let's get into the meta slaving here we've got Greya, and then let's have a look at her skills. So, with her Union Burst, she is going to inflict large magical damage to all enemies in the front line. Sounds like somebody we know, called Ilya. Very, very straightforward. However, the range is actually quite significant. It's 890 range. Pretty nice. Moving through, we're going to go into skill 1, which is Dragon Inferno. Inflicts medium magic damage to the frontmost enemy, and also applies invulnerability to the user for a short duration, where she is going to actually not be able to take any damage at all. Very very similar to Christina. So this invulnerability actually lasts for 2.2 seconds. That is honestly quite significant considering Christina's lasts for three and it's on a UB. Otherwise, this skill is going to be a single target magic damage to the frontmost enemy. Moving on to skill two, we've got Dragon Agni. This bad boy creates a field centered around the enemy with the highest physical damage. That's quite nice considering it's pretty much going to be homing in on like their physical DPS carries. In these days, it's going to be like your Halloween Shinobu, it's going to be your Mwimis. And obviously by what I just said, I essentially just gave away where she is going to be finding use. But that said, let's keep going. The field inflicts magic damage to enemies within the radius. Okay, so this is an interesting one. And the reason that it's interesting is because this is not like a damage over time status effect thing. So if you're thinking poison, so I'm thinking uh, Mitsuki, Mitsuki, she does the poison AOE. This one is not actually like that one where you can actually go through armor because it is a poison status effect. This one is going to be dependent on her magic attack, which means that it is going to be a subject to defense calculations. What this also means, however, is that if she actually gets stronger with more magic attack buffs, then this field could also get stronger. And as for the field itself, it's actually quite significant radius of 300 that means if this is the target 300 this way 300 that way all right and so to wrap it up ex skill increase to magic attack literally if it was anything else i'd be like what the frig is going on my boys and then we've got a respectable loop pattern a two into auto attack into one into auto into two into one into auto auto back to two i quite like this because there is quite like a significant amount of uptime for both the skill two and the skill one where she is going to be laying down that field as well as getting some invulnerabilities at some like nice moments and so that is Greya's kit in a nutshell i do need to talk more about her archetype where she fits in in terms of practicality, I'm talking CB, I'm talking arena, Luna Tower, stuff like that. So first of all, after going through that entire kit, you have to say like, it is very, very reminiscent of your Ilya. And if you guys are not familiar with Ilya, I'll just go through her really quick. So she inflicts magic damage to all enemies within range, but she recovers HP. For her skill one, she essentially does damage and then gains a magic attack buff and consumes HP. And then with the skill two, she is going to inflict magic damage and also consume HP. Essentially, she is very very much like a enmity unit with some level of recovery. So what Greya and Ilya have in common, they are essentially they fill the same role where they are midline AOE mages. However, where Ilya edges out is the fact that she actually gains a magic attack buff, but she also can heal but she also on top of that deals damage to herself. And so generally speaking, Ilya is going to be your stronger but riskier type of unit. On the other hand, Greya is like you're like a little bit weaker, but still quite good. But she is certainly not going to match up to the DPS of Ilya unless like under some certain conditions. And so in terms of utility, in terms of practicality, you're gonna be taking your Ilya or even your Greya to the same places where you need the AOE. So you could take them through like the dungeons. You can certainly take them through like the Lunar Tower, but most important of all, you are going to be probably taking Greya as well as Ilya, but Greya in this case, over to the arena, over to the PvP. And that is where, for the most part, she will live until, and this is a big maybe, until we get to multi-target bosses. When we finally get to the multi-target bosses, there is a chance. There is a chance that you could be using Greya, you could be using Ilya, you could be using a lot 
of other different units that just do like a really good damage when they scale with extra units such as Tomo. So that in a nutshell is where Greya is going to fit in. She's essentially Ilya, less risky but less damage. And for the most part, wherever Ilya can go, Greya can go as well. All right, so with all of that being said, should you roll for this beautiful little dragon? I would say it's probably going to be a skip unless you do like her character. Unfortunately, we have Summer Hell coming up quite soon. Okay, not quite soon. It's probably like three months out. But all I can say is that there are higher priority characters that you should probably be rolling for. Even going for like Oedo Kuka on the upcoming Prefez banner is probably better use of your gems than this one here. And the fact that she is permanent kind of makes it all the easier, right? You could certainly get her a little bit later on, but then again, there are a lot of people who haven't even gotten their EOS yet. Well, I mean, like it took me freaking like eight months or maybe it was 12 months before I got my EO. But yeah, in terms of should you roll, it's for the most part going to be a skip. All right, so with that being said, let's move on back over to this one over here. Let's have a look at this March update. And then down here, we've got the three star guaranteed premium gacha. Uh, quite a nice one. I think you guys are already very, very familiar with this. Essentially, you're using premium gems to get a 10 pool with a guaranteed three star on it. However, what we do have is a little bit more of an exciting news, which is this one over here, which is a pretty much a dolphin pack. So what we've got is a new campaign for those seeking pure, unadulterated value. It's a, it's a pretty sick wording from Crunchyroll, but essentially what we're going to be getting is daily 500 jewel packs for seven days. So I think at launch or at soft launch, I can't remember, we had something similar to this where every day for like three or five days or something, you could buy 500 jewels for a set amount of money. And this jewel pack would be at quite a significant discount. So if you guys have been wanting to spend a little bit more for these, uh, I would probably recommend this one here. However, if you are going to compare to like monthly pack, I think monthly pack is still significantly better than this. Like what kind of game doesn't have their monthly pack at the best value, right? Okay, moving on, we've got Hatsune's Perfect Presence. So this is a revival event. This is certainly a rerun. It's a, it's a pretty cute rerun, all right? So essentially in this one, we're going to be following the story of Shiori as well as Hatsune. And so I'm just going to talk about the rewards. I'm not going to talk about the story because I do not want to spoil it for you guys. And so in a nutshell, we're going to be getting a kind of a new shard system in terms of like the victory metal gacha lineup and it's pretty obvious from this one over here lineup one is going to contain two sets of shiori's memory shard at five times each and so what this means is that the strategy for actually like moving to the next boxes is going to slightly be different this time than it has for the previous times if you remember especially for like uh, a couple of the other events it's like the first batch we get we get like 30 of one of the characters and then we get like 40 of the other character and then we get like 25 of the other character or whatever this is honestly significantly lower than what we normally got. However, this is kind of like the reality we live in because this is almost in preparation for your uh, compendium, the event compendium. So yeah, through this event, we can actually farm Shiori as well as Hatsune shards. This was... <laughs> Honestly, this is quite nostalgic because this was one of the most important events for us uh, before CB1. We needed to farm the hell out of these Shiori nodes. And so before I move on, there is something I noticed and it's that in this paragraph, there is actually no mention of a special boss. So there is a very hard boss. We've got a hard boss, but we don't have a SP boss, which is quite interesting. I don't know if we will be getting an SP boss. Uh, if you guys did play through it in JP or CN, let us know down in the comments below. But that said, let's move on. And so next we've got the April Tower of Luna. Honestly, not overly much to be said over here. We're getting an extra 20 floors as well as a new EX one. And this is going to take us all the way up to 230th floor. Just a kind reminder that even though you can't finish up to 230, there is no missable content in Tower of Luna. Every time Tower of Luna comes back, you can start from where you were last time and keep going. All right, so moving on, we've got the game update news. Oh baby, this is what I'm talking about. Area 23, which means we got new hard modes. So in the hard mode for this one, I believe we get Kokoro, we get Mimi, and we get Shizuru shards. However, at this point in time, I would argue that the majority of you who have been playing since day one are probably gonna be farming a lot less hard quest. So it actually might be a little bit before we get like the Kasumi, before we get the Anne, like somebody kind of like more worth farming. But my guys, if you are newer and you don't have your Kokoros at five star with the UE or the Shizuru's at the five stars, this is gonna be a blessing considering like this is also gonna include a whole bunch of the new equipment. All right, and so after that, we've got the main story chapter 12 to episodes one to seven. I, I, I gotta be honest, I am so freaking hooked on the story. I wish we had it faster. Level cap increase from 127 to 130, pretty standard stuff. And this is all going to drop on the third or rather the 23rd of March. Sorry, my guys, I'm Australian. The first one is usually like the day and then the month. 
It's kind of weird. All right, moving through, we've got a BGM update to the Memorial Jukebox, otherwise Dungeon Manor Times 2. You guys already know, if you guys have not actually like learned how to scam dungeon or rather save the dungeon, then do check out one of my previous videos. I'm pretty sure I teach you guys how to make sure you can maximize your gains from these Dungeon Manor Times 2. If you guys are still not 100% sure as to what I am talking about, either I'll pop it uh, up over there or I'll drop a link down in the description below. Okay, and then after that, we've got a Grotto Quest Times 2, and that is going to wrap up everything in this part two update for Mysteria Friends. Honestly, this kind of feels like a break period and I, I kind of welcome that. But that's probably because I spend more time in Precon than a lot of other people. All right, and so time to wrap things up. I'm going to leave you guys with a question. Are you going to be rolling for a Greya? I'm going to be honest. I am quite into like the dragon waifu type of archetype, exactly like Greya. And she's freaking like wearing a skirt as well. Like, bruh less but unfortunately i have committed i have committed to trying to only roll for limited units this year and so that is where i am at let me know where you guys are at in terms of if you are rolling for greya and if you do end up dropping a comment down below i would really appreciate that because it means you've watched up until the end of the video so thank you guys so much if you liked this video please consider giving it a thumbs up and if you would like to see more then please consider subscribing but otherwise my guys as greya once said all good things must come to an end and so thank you guys so much for watching and i'll catch you guys in the next video Bye-bye.